If you're thinking about buying a sports car, I can totally recommend the MX-5 Mark III. It's not so expensive. This one was less than 4,000 quid. It doesn't rust so bad as the Mark IIs. It's a lot cheaper than the Mark 3.5s or the Mark IVs. So uh, it's a good choice, but I've got some tips for you. Safety first. The MX-5 Mark III introduced traction control. Now, get traction control. I had a Mark II, no traction control. Crashed it going around the corner. It's doing 30 miles an hour. Wasn't doing anything interesting, but that was it. All over, just like that. With traction control, it's much less likely to happen. Uh, only the 2-litre Mark III has traction control, not the 1.8. So get yourself a 2-litre, it'll keep you safe. Next thing to look at is the wheel arches. These, these can rust. This one rusted, three of them across here. Got that fixed, it cost 700 quid. So uh, if you can get one without rust, that's good. If it has rust, be prepared to get it fixed quick because it gets worse every wash. First of all, you'll just see bubbling. It, just, it looks like the paint's bubbling, that's because it's rusted underneath. Um, really just save yourself the trouble and don't get one with rust but if it happens and you like it get it fixed quick on a sports car tires make a big difference if you've only had a normal car and you've just had all kinds of different tires and never noticed any difference it's not the same with the sports car you've got to get sports tires be ready to spend some decent money on them these are all Hankooks these cost uh, 105 quid each so you're looking at over 400 quid for all of them it just makes a huge difference. When I bought this, it had the wrong type of tire on it and the car was a different car. So you gotta spend the money on the tires. Also, I wouldn't put different on the front and the back. This car's designed to have an even weight balance front to back. Uh, and if you have different tires front and back, you've got different grip front and back and you're upsetting that. Uh, you just get, get good tires all around. Something you see quite a lot on the older cars is that the roof does this in the corner. That's because there's a little strap in there and that tucks it in as it comes down and that strap just breaks so I've got it on one side what I do I get out to put the roof down I just hold it in looks great you have to get out of the car but it's worth it for the look it's all about the look now an annoying thing about the MX-5 roof is that it drains internally the water comes in here and it goes in through the body of the car and out of a little hole at the bottom there's a little channel it goes down now that channel's got these little flaps in that stop road noise when they're up and let water down when they go down and I think the problem is that they can just get stuck and the water just fills up and when that happens it overflows inside and it overflows into the boot so if you're looking at buying one you want to make sure that that's not happened a lot and the best way is just to look in the boot so inside the boot if it's really wet you'll probably immediately just notice loads of condensation on the inside but there's this little uh, it's like a liner lift up the liner and feel the fabric at the bottom and you'll know instantly if it's wet lift that liner up and if the boot's not rusted then it's probably not been very long it might be that the dealers just kind of pressure washed it and it's been in a garage for ages or something like that uh, but if that boot's rusted if this is all rusty corroded just forget about it you will worry about the roof in the winter there's a few things that it does that's just like what are you going to do it, it gets like these little it gets green on it You've got to give it a good clean i use renovo soft top cleaner that's pretty good but it still gets like these little bits of green on it this one's had these bits of like lichen or something on it since i bought it i don't know what the hell i can't get rid of them don't use a pressure washer on it definitely not so it's just a soft brush and cleaning stuff so it's quite a lot of work also it will get condensation on the inside it's not leaking it's just if everywhere's wet the car heats up a bit inside during the day and then this cools down it just it, you get condensation it's like a single wall tent so you will get condensation on the inside of the roof. There's nothing you can do about it. A friend of mine's got exactly the same problem. It's just something you have to live with. Uh, it's worth it for the good times, <laughs> put it that way. So inside the MX-5, there's a couple of things that might be broke, which I wouldn't worry about. So for example, this is a really crap design. If you push it too far, it splits along there and it ends up just flapping. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. But the solution is just to take it off YouTube it, it's, it's a little bit fiddly, you have to pull this bit off and yeah, you have to do a couple of things, it only takes 10 minutes. The other thing is this centre console cup holder cover thing, the mechanism that makes it lock in place, that easily breaks uh, and it ends up just sort of rattling around which is well annoying. But you can fix that with a piece of sponge, believe it or not, just a tiny little bit, uh, dead easy, I'll link to another video to do that. So don't worry about that, you can easily fix that. 
another thing that might put some people off is because it's an old car there's no sort of Bluetooth or anything like that but you can fix that with one of these it's just a, a Bluetooth repeater it costs like 15 quid works great you can connect your phone to it you tune the radio into it dead easy now the seats these seats are a little bit hard I don't know if it's just this car or they're all like that but they're a little bit firm and um, also when you got the top town in the summer these are leather it can get pretty sweaty <laughs> seriously like you'd have the top up in the middle of the day because it's just too hot if you don't like getting sweaty you get fabric seats something to prepare yourself for is fuel economy this is not a fuel efficient car I have to say um, I live on the Peak District so I'm always going up and down hills always breaking for corners always accelerating so I'm probably using about the most fuel you would use uh, and I on a on a really bad fill up I've got like 26 miles to the gallon on average I get like 30 if I've gone on a long trip I might get 40 uh, so it's not disastrous but it's it, look figure you're gonna get 30 miles to the gallon out of it so the last thing I'd say is a philosophical thing really if if you're thinking about buying this car you've got to understand it's a sports car it's designed to be engaging and to be engaged with by which I mean you drive it and you concentrate and you enjoy driving it if you're the sort of person who just kind of switches off and wakes up when you get there this car isn't for you really it's a little bit compromised for just being nice to look at uh, you're not going to get the full benefit if you're not going to drive it like a sports car but if you are the sort of person who enjoys driving this is an incredibly rewarding car it's just it, it's more like a bike than a car the way it responds the way you feel the road you just feel like you're in complete control and it's just a wonderful car so i would recommend it